Hi, yeah, no, it's the weirdest thing. I was just getting ready to film the video and I have no idea where it went. Yeah, no, I, I've got the Adobe out looking for it right now, but if, you should probably just send another one over to be honest. Okay, okay, cool, thank you. Hello and welcome to Monster of the Week. This week we'll be taking a look at a very special monster which is sure to leave an impression on all who cross paths with it. As its name would suggest, the chocolate golem is indeed a golem made of chocolat. As always, my objective here today is to go over this monster's in-game lore, its publication history, as well as provide you with an updated 5th edition stat block and a few potential encounter ideas. Now as I mentioned, the chocolate golem is entirely made out of CHOCOLATE! CHOCOLATE! 1,000 pounds of chocolate to be precise. Now that is a lot of Hershey bars. 10,323 of them, but who's counting? And with this tremendous amount of chocolate, a skilled magic user is able to melt it all down, pour it into a mold, add a little magic, and ultimately bring about a very special new type of golem. Much like the pink dragon I recently covered on the channel, this monster might seem totally ridiculous, but I promise not only is it a real D&D monster, it actually has a ton of potential use both as a threat and a set piece. But I am getting way ahead of myself here. The Chocolate Golem first appeared in issue 228 of Dragon Magazine in the year of 1996. Hot new video games like Pokemon Blue, Super Mario 64, and Twisted Metal 2 were sweeping the nation. Also, The Neverhood. Remember the Neverhood? Those of us who could put down these cutting edge titles of the future for long enough to play some good old D&D &D were greeted in the April issue of Dragon Magazine by this. Look at this artwork. Just look at that face. Oh my god, look at that face. This might be the last thing an adventurer sees if they take the chocolate golem too lightly. And while sure a golem made entirely from chocolate might seem like a whimsical silly creature for the players to poke fun at, rest assured that this is the face of an unfeeling, unthinking, killing machine that will never even consider taking a moment of hesitation before introducing the front of someone's skull to its back. And they're made of chocolate. This issue of the magazine had a few kind of silly golems, including the Chia Golem and the Plush Golem, which might actually be the scariest thing I've ever seen. Surely it will haunt my dreams. Now the horrific art of the chocolate golem is of course depicting one made in the image of a rabbit, but the actual shape of the chocolate golem is only really limited by the mold sculptor's creativity and the amount of chocolate the creator has access to. So technically this week is a twofer because you could easily have the golem be shaped like a dragon and bam, new dragon subtype. In fact, it's even more than that really because you could have it shaped like anything in the monster manual and beyond if you want. Theoretically, we could just remake the entire 5th edition bestiary out of chocolate. Hell, while we're at it, why not make some chocolate humanoid golems too? Oh shit, never, never mind, let's, let's actually never do that. So I feel like you get it. We've got a pretty good idea of what the chocolate golem's concept is. It is a golem and it is made out of chocolate. Where this creature really shines in my opinion is when you look at some of its unique abilities and mechanics and some of the ways that you could actually make it show up in a D&D game. There are actually a surprising amount of ways that this creature can be played completely straight and come out as a fantastic encounter. So if you'll continue on this journey with me, the next Next thing we're going to talk about is exactly what its mechanics are and what the golem can do, and then we're going to brainstorm some story ideas. Also, if you are enjoying the video this far, please leave a like or a comment because to be completely real with you, it just helps out the channel a whole bunch. I appreciate it immensely. Now I hope you're hungry because it is time for I love chocolate. How combat actually started with this thing, who knows, but the fact of the matter is, if a group of adventurers finds themselves up against a chocolate golem in battle, 
they're in trouble. I imagine there will probably be a moment of laughter quickly followed up by a brief panic as the true potential of this monster is unleashed. Clocking in at a challenge rating of 6, this golem might not be as brutal as, say, the iron golem, but it has some really nasty tricks up its sleeve considering its CR. The chocolate golem, like basically every other golem, has a pair of good old-fashioned fists which are great for crushing stuff. But what makes it especially deadly is its molten chocolate breath weapon. It can exhale melted chocolate in a 10-foot cone, meaning it can only hit a small area, but anyone in that area is gonna have a bad time. Targets will take 4d6 fire damage as they are coated in boiling chocolate. But if they fail their saving throw, they are also blinded and restrained until the end of the golem's next turn. That obviously spells danger for the targets, but it can get so much worse. If the creature covered in molten chocolate takes any amount of cold damage, the chocolate will harden into a thick shell which permanently restrains, blinds, and incapacitates the creature inside. The golem, of course, has no way to deal cold damage, but most golems are going to be paired up with a spellcaster of some kind, and Ray of Frost is only a cantrip. Just saying. Now, of course, someone trapped inside this chocolatey shell can be freed by another creature on the outside who can destroy this delectable prison, but I think it has potential to make for a pretty dynamic moment, and worst case scenario for the attacker here, it's still taking someone out of the fight for a turn and forcing someone else to use their turn to free them. The other thing I want to note here is how the golem's body itself reacts to various types of damage. As a magical construct, it of course resists a lot of non-magical damage in various damage types. However, it does have a special interaction with both fire and cold damage. Much like the molten chocolate the golem spews, when the chocolate golem itself takes cold damage, its body instead hardens and it says no thank you to the damage received. The golem of course takes no damage and its armor class goes up by 2 for one minute. Ah, well if it's immune to cold, perhaps it's weak against fire, the party might say. But they'd be wrong. Sort of. While the golem isn't exactly vulnerable to fire damage, when it takes 10 or more fire damage at once, scalding hot chunks of its body go flying off in all directions, potentially burning anyone within 5 feet of the creature's position. Personally, I really like it when monsters have unique effects that interact with varying conditions and damage types. As a player, it feels sort of like you're learning how to solve a puzzle for better or for worse, while you're also in the middle of battle. It can be really fun, and once you know how a creature works, you can always try to use that knowledge to your advantage. So I imagine at this point, the question on everyone's mind is how do we use this thing? Well, whether you're trying to achieve something silly or something on the more serious side, I have a few ideas. So let's move on and talk about a few. Something mentioned in the original monster entry for the Chocolate Golem that I thought was pretty fascinating is that these creatures are often owned by wealthy members of society and brought out during parties or grand events. Let's say a powerful noble wants to host some sort of ball, a fantastic party where all of high society will be present. A group of finely crafted, artisanal chocolate golems can fulfill so many roles for that noble. They can serve guests, acting as waitstaff. They can be a walking snack, serving hors d'oeuvres as well as being one. And if need be, they can serve as powerfully potent guards, all the while fitting in with the rest of the party guests. The last thing you want to put a damper on your night among high society is a bunch of armed mercenaries inside mingling with your noble peers. A golem made of chocolate, however, can seem completely innocuous at such an event, but still perfectly deadly should the need arise. Purchasing a golem squad for your party is also no doubt to be an expensive proposition, and therefore a perfect way to flex among the guests who might make up most of the elite in the kingdom. According to the magazine article, there are also smaller, less deadly versions of this golem referred to as party golems. These lesser golems can't attack, and they're usually built with treats or small trinkets inside and used kind of like pinatas. Except in this case, the golem can try to actually run away while the children at the party chase it down with sticks. This might seem kind of macabre, but remember that golems aren't living beings. They're simply 
animated chunks of material merely crafted into a humanoid form. At least, that's what the man wants you to think. What if one of these little party golems became self-aware and reached out to the adventuring party for help? Maybe the group is at some sort of grand ball or event, or maybe even a carnival, and one of these little golems who is destined to be destroyed has achieved some level of sentience. It doesn't want to be bashed to bits for its innards, it wants to live! Perhaps the party helps the golem escape, which could lead to a whole quest line where they try to discover how this golem became sentient in the first place. This, of course, might lead them to a dark discovery, where they learn that the local golem crafting wizard is using soul magic to fuel his creations. Maybe it's out of spite, revenge, or perhaps it's just simply cheaper. But whatever the reason, he must be stopped from doing this in the future. Anytime though that an adventuring party is at some sort of ball or party, the chocolate golem makes a great addition. Perhaps the adventuring party is there to steal something or assassinate someone. In either such case, a chocolate golem could make for a really cool encounter if they're found out. Or maybe the party isn't even there to cause trouble, but something goes wrong and all the golems go hey Haywire. Suddenly, what started as a fun attraction becomes a bloodbath as chocolate golems start smashing party guests and drowning them in molten, scalding, boiling chocolate. The party, of course, has to save the day, and once the battle is over, the wealthy noble host of the ball hires them to get to the bottom of how this happened in the first place. And who knows where that might lead. Even if they don't get into any crazy shenanigans, simply having a chocolate golem present as a set piece is just another fun little detail. And it's often in those little details that our stories really become stories. The final plot hook I want to mention is that I think chocolate golems would make for excellent guardians of a funhouse style dungeon. If you don't know what I mean by a funhouse dungeon, check out the AD&D adventure White Plume Mountain. Trust me, it's wild. Your standard funhouse dungeon is a place built usually by an extremely powerful wizard or some other kind of magic entity where the inside of said dungeon doesn't really make sense from a realistic perspective. Each room is usually its own self-contained thing that doesn't really add up or work with what's in the surrounding rooms, and it can get a little wacky. And this is why I think the chocolate golem would fit right in among the traps and puzzles of a powerful wizard's Alice in Wonderland esque dungeon. Actually, now that I think of it, just do Willy Wonka, but as a D&D dungeon. Except if you want to be a whiny snob who doesn't actually help the party, you don't get turned into a blueberry you get turned into a blueberry and then turned into jam by a chocolate golem. I just love this weird little golem and I sincerely hope that you do too. As always, if you want to use this monster at your table and you're not playing a D&D, but you are playing 5th edition D&D, you can find the complete stat block and my conversion of the monster in the description down below. And if you are one of my lovely patrons, you will of course find the 5th edition monster manual style stat block over on the Patreon page, which is also linked down below. If you're not already a patron, definitely consider checking it out. It's $3 a month and it helps support the channel and you get a nifty stat block once per week. And I can assure you that all our stat blocks are made with the latest in D&D technology. Speaking of patrons, that reminds me it is time for Patron of the Week. This week's randomly selected patron is none other than Aaron Sin. Thank you so much, Aaron. Let's just be grateful it's Easter weekend. Speaking of which, to all of you out there who are observing Easter this weekend, I hope it's a good one and you find many a chocolate golem at whatever lavish parties you end up attending. Finally, I want to give a quick shout out to Artie Pavlov over on Twitter for recommending this monster. It was a good one and I had a ton of fun researching it, so thank you for the recommendation. And thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then. Thank you.